Shalom Rastafari. Melkam Das Baal. May Yeshua, may His Word dwell richly, indwell, dwell, tabernacle. May His Word tabernacle with you and in you, brothers and sisters, during this Sukkot, this Sukkot season. Awo, awo. Just want to say a couple of words on protecting our and our hearts and minds and seeing Yeshua having our mind stayed on Yeshua. And here we have a picture of the tabernacle, right? Looking inside the tabernacle with that veil, that veil being taken away, right? That veil being taken away and I and I seeing and beholding Yeshua, Ha Moshiach, right? Ha Moshiach, Ha Moshiach, Bain Elohim Chayim, the living, the living Yeshua, as we come out of this Babylon. Now it's interesting because Sukkot was one of the places, one of the first places that they tabernacled and they encamped. Speaking of our ancestors, speaking of the righteous of Sadiq Khan in spirit and in truth, when they came out of Egypt, right? Sukkot, right? So I want to say a couple of words right here, brothers and sisters, on the inner meaning of Sukkot, right? This inner meaning of tabernacles. What's the inner meaning of tabernacles? Well, tabernacles is a type of the Lord's. Gita Adonai's his his supper, right? His supper feast, his tabernacles, right? Where he says to us about his word, right? His word abiding, his word dwelling in us. After all, John's gospel, right? John's gospel gives us some very important clues. Right, that the Sukkah that the Israelites dwelt in, they dwelt in during their their journey, right? After they had came out of Egypt. Right? It wasn't over just because they came out of Egypt. It's not over because we acknowledge the King of Kings in Christ and we accept this it's not over there. That's that's where we now must begin to tabernacle and have his word tabernacle in us and, and the hearing of his word and the meditating on his word the mindfulness to his word so the way that we observe right Sukkot right and this indwelling and in tabernacles time is not in the way of the old in the types and the shadows but in the way of the new, in the Berit Hadasha, right? In the new covenant. So what is the foundation and foundation? Here's where John's gospel, where Johannes is Wengel, um, building on the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Some look at John's gospel to be a Gnostic gospel, and truly it is, but in the in the epinosis, in the full knowledge of Yeshua HaMoshiach, not in science, falsely so-called, or gnosis pseudonymous, not in the so-called knowledge that many who come in Jesus' name claim, and they fall short of the race, and many even fall shorter of the grace because they do not allow and have that word tabernacle in him. Take up residence and to dwell richly in I and I heart and in I and I mind. There's a couple of verses I want to share. I wanted to touch on mantra, right? You know, because a lot of folks talk about control. It's not about control. That's a con and a troll. It's about the managing, right? The managing of our heart and our mind by having Yeshua HaMoshiach, His Word, Richly dwell in us because the word became flesh. And as his incarnation in Kedistin Gomaria, so are we born again through his seed, 
through that seed. And what's the seed? The seed is that word. Right? It is the word, the sound, and the power. The power of the Wenge. The power of the gospel. The power of the good news. So brothers and sisters, I want to share a couple of verses right here. I got a couple of minutes in this recording, right? And we hope to go into this a little bit fuller, right? But many of us are going through certain sufferations, right? We're going through various, I call them growing pains, right? Because just because we are born again in that seed and by that seed and that faith on that seed, that faith in his word, we have to grow up. Right? This is why the scripture calls us little children. Right? Little children. Spend some time reading those verses on little children. Because that's what we are. We might be big people in the world. But when we are born again in the regeneration, we are little children. Now the children have to be nourished. The children have to grow. And here's where the word and beholding him in and through his word is so very vital. Have you not heard the teaching of his majesty, which says to we that discipline of the mind is a basic ingredient of genuine morality and therefore a spiritual strength. And in order to follow this aim, one must be guided Almost be guided by the translators say religion, but we know that word is hymenote, and that what religion means to a Gentile or a Greco European in, in the Gentile way of thinking, because they trace it to the Latin, while I and I trace it to I and I own roots. This is what we have to know what our roots and culture is. So the word religion in the Western sense, religio means to tie back, tie down. But his majesty is not speaking from that root. He is, he is the root and the offspring of great King David. So when we look into the Afro-Shemitic, we get to recognize the word hymenote, right? Hymenote is the living faith. So how do we live in the living faith? How do we grow in the living faith? Well, it's by his word and it's in his grace. Once again, brothers, and sisters, let's go to John's gospel just briefly. And we're going to touch on mantra. Right? You know what a mantra is. Right? Well, if you don't know what a mantra is, they say it comes from Eastern mysticism. Now, we're not here teaching no Eastern mysticism. But when we find a truth, and this truth is pretty well disseminated, we can show a comparison. This can be a stepping stone. Right, So we can come to the higher understanding because we're looking at the Bible from a Western Gentile perspective. And we see that as long as they've been living and looking at the Bible from that way, we don't see the true fruits. Because we have to get to the true root. And we have to properly plow and cultivate I and I hearts and minds. Self-examine I and I selves. Right? But we first have to just allow his word to dwell within us richly, right? And learn his word, right? So a mantra, just on this point right here, that Christos, the word, right? The word is that seed, right? His word is our, for lack of a better word, our mantra. What is a mantra? It's a word, sound, and power. His word, that is the protection of I and I mind, I and I soul. I and I heart and I and I soul. It's a power phrase of mystic sound syllables composed of vowels and consonants. And it's used in the managing and the focusing of I and I heart and I and I mind. I and I mind, I and I soul. And these words are words of power. As his majesty says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. And this aids in the growing and growing us up in true spirituality. So this time of tabernacling is an excellent time to behold him and to behold his glory. 
Here's what the word says about our birth, our regeneration. That as many, but as many as receive, as kebele, as receive him. To them, to I and I gave he the power, the authorization, the authority, the sultan, the cultivation to become the sons or the children, the b'nai ha Elohim. Even to them that ma'men, I and I who admit, who trust on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of Elohim. This is speaking to I and I, second birth, or our rebirth, or the regeneration. Right? So, tabernacling. Look at the incarnation right here. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So the word became flesh. So how does his word become flesh of I and I flesh and bone of I and I bone. Well, it's through the blood of the Lamb, receiving that blood of the Lamb, His life, right? He has given His life, right? For I and I life, that we can have this relationship with the Almighty, with the blameless creator, with our Father. Not just a creator creature relationship, but a father and a child relation. But the Word is the key. The word is the key. He says to we in John 14, 23, to keep my words. Remember the word? The word dwelt. The, the word tabernacle amongst us is for I and I to have his word tabernacle in I and I heart, in I and I mind. To meditate on his power word. To pray for the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. Right, and to pray for other brothers and sisters to fellowship with, to ask him, not to go out just to seek on our own, but to ask him, to trust him. John fourteen twenty three says, Yeshua answered and said to him, Right, if a man loved me, now it was Judas. Not Iscariot, Yehuda, not Askarotu, that asked him, Lord Adoni, how is it that thou wilt man I fest? This is what tabernacle is. It's a manifest, a manifestation. The word became flesh and dwelt amongst I and I. So seeing Yeshua in tabernacles, seeing Yeshua at the heart and at the center of the feast of tabernacles, right? Seeing Yeshua dwelling and dwelling in Yeshua and dwelling in Yeshua through that seed, through that word. So Judas, Yehuda, not Iscariot, not Judas Iscariot, another Judah, Adoni, he said, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself to us? How are you going to manifest to us, to I and I, and not to the world? Yeshua answered and said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. He will guard. He will protect my words. He will treasure my words. The word, sound, and power. And my father will love him. And we, so Yeshua, the Bain Ha Elohim Chaim, and his father, our father, will come to him and make our abode with him. This is very, very interesting right here, my brothers and sisters. So this is the key. This is the key for we. This is the key for our tabernacling, allowing the word to dwell, his word. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Elohim, by the word of Moshiach, right? So that abode, John 14, 23. Right? He says that if a man love me, he will keep my word. If we say that we love 
the King of Kings, we keep Yeshua HaMoshiach's word. And the Father, our Abba, and the Moshiach, the Son, tabernacles in I and I, in spirit and in truth. Let's just go to John, compare this for a moment with John 8 and 31. John 8 and 31. And this is just so that we get a get even more of a groundation, a foundation in the in the true New Testament Sukkot, tabernacle and indwelling, and how this is I and I supping, right? I and I supping with Adoni, I and I supping with Gita, I and I supping with the Master, with Yeshua. It says right here, and he spake these words, and many are main or believed on him. John 8 and 31. Then said Yeshua to the Jews, the Yehuda, which are maimed on him, to the Yehuda, the Judahites who are main, who be lived on him. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples, my disciple, my students. We are learning of him indeed. Then verse 32 says, and this is a part of verse 32 is actually a part of verse 31. But so many of us have heard verse 31 apart from verse 32. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Well, tell them the truth of this. This is Yeshua speaking. Right? This is I and I, black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ speaking. And he is, was speaking to the Judahites, to the black Jews, the Yehuda, who are maimed in him. And the fruit of that is the king of kings and the righteous Ethiopian Hebrew Israelites. If ye continue, that means they were already in his word, but if they continued, continued in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth cannot make you free if you're not free in the Son, because it's whom the Son has made free is free indeed so they do a little tricky thing right there they give you the b part of the verse after a semicolon and the truth shall make you free and the truth shall make you free right but they forget the context so it's out of context that's why it sounds like so much nonsense everybody even heathen all kind of people because yeah the truth shall make you free and they give no credit right they never give no credit they discredit right they discredit because they don't give no credit to yeshua Yeshua said this to the Yehuda who admitted on him that if they continue, if I and I continue, if I and I, the elect Rastafari continue in his word, in the word of the Bain Ha Elohim, we know that the Ab, that Kanamawi Hala Selassie and his son, our Savior, dwells and indwells in I and I. Then are ye my disciples indeed and See, it's on the disciples that he was speaking to. He was speaking to discipleship right there. Right? So this time, Sukkot time, is an important time to tabernacle. Right? To tabernacle and have his word. The word become flesh by dwelling in your heart and in your mind and meditating and giving him praise. Right? And fellowshipping. You see... We have to recognize how much he has loved us. The father has loved us. He says, love one another. Love your brother and sister as he has loved you. You see, but a lot of us are not persuaded how much he has loved us. So sometimes our love falls short because we're not receiving his love. Right? His love. Let's just touch on this right here. Um, John 11 and 45. I got two more verses I want to share with you. 11 and 45. So I can spend even more time dwelling and having his word richly indwell. But I wanted to share this with the eye of them. And I hope and pray that it is helpful in the true spirituality of Rash Tefari. When we talk about word, sound and power and walking it out in spirit and in truth. Not just what we say, but also what we meditate in our heart and I and I mind. It begins there, my brothers and sisters, not being conformed to the world, but being transformed by the renewing of I and I mind. And I know many of us didn't know these things, but now we have time to learn them, to put them in our treasured place, put them within, to treasure them, 
John 11 and 45 says this. 11 and 45 says, it says, And many of the Jews, the Judahites, right, which came to Mariam and had seen the things which Yeshua did, they are maimed on him. Right? They are maimed on him. Right? They admitted on him. So, even though there were some who he came to who did not receive him, there was a faithful remnant. As there is a faithful remnant now. One more verse, my brothers and sisters. 12.11. Right? 12.11. Right? Also says, because of because that, by reason of him, many Yehuda went away, right? You know, went away and are maimed on Yeshua. Because that, by reason of him, many of the Yehuda, right? Many of the Yehuda went away. Many came out, right? Came out from the confusion of that time, the religious confusion of that time. And they admitted on Yeshua, as many of I and I have come out of counterfeit so-called Christianity and Christianities and admit on the King of Kings in Christ. So my brothers and sisters, Christos' word is that protection of I and I mind and I and I soul, right? And his word is the power phrases that keeps I and I heart and mind in perfect peace. As Isaiah 63 and 3 states right here. Thou will keep him or her in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed, is focused on thee. Because he trusteth in thee. He trusts thee. Because we give credit to the King of Kings in Yeshua HaMoshiach. So shalom, wonder mode, you hit touch, and once again, a melkam das ba'al, and may the word of the King of Kings in Christ richly dwell and tabernacle within thee. Awol.